In May 1940, Holland was invaded by the Third Reich's army. But World War II did not stop Mayor Van Alphen. As early as 1941, the mayor started developing a plan to build a permanent circuit just north of Zandvoort. Meanwhile, the Germans destroyed much of the town, demolishing 40 hotels and 600 houses to make way for their infamous Atlantic Wall. Van Alphen's ambitions, though, were indestructible and he came up with a cunning plan. He persuaded the Germans to allow him to use the debris scattered around the demolished village for building the winners of the war a road to parade on. Of course, he held back who he felt would win, never mind that all he wanted to see parading on his road were racing cars. As soon as the war ended, a team of Dutch motor racing enthusiasts advised Van Alphen on how to complete the shape of his track, which would run through the dunes. In the summer of 1946, British racing legend Sammy Davis came to Zandvoort to inspect the 2.6-mile course and share his recommendations. It would take another two years, however, for the debris to be paved with tarmac, as in these post-war years, the authorities were able nor keen to provide Zandvoort with money for something so irrelevant as a racing circuit. Van Alphen retired in February 1948, but his successor, Mayor Van Venema, kept the dream alive and the track was finally completed that summer. The British Racing Drivers Club was quick to organize a race at Zandvoort, arranging 20 pre-war Grand Prix cars to come to Holland, such as Altas, ERAs, Maseratis and Bugattis. The race, comprising two 25-lap heats and a 40-lap final, was won by the Siamese Prince Bira. After a spectacular scrap with Tony Rolt, whose Alfa Aitken finished just a tenth of a second behind Bira's Maserati. Back in the UK, word quickly spread about this new and exciting circuit on the other side of the North Sea. A young Sterling Moss couldn't wait to race on it. I came to Zarnvold as soon as I could. Well, you've got to realise that uh, after the war, of course, we didn't have racing over here. It was hill climbs and sprints and stuff. And then suddenly in, in Holland, you've got this fantastic circuit. And uh, I remember going over there and being very impressed because it was a very nice place and everybody was friendly and, and the circuit was quite demanding. There were you know, quite a few corners that were you know, not that easy. The following year, British teams and privately entered Maseratis were joined by Ferrari and Talbo Lago. Again, there were two heats, one by Luigi Villaresi's Ferrari and the Maserati of Reg Parnell. But at the start of the final, Giuseppe Farina's Maserati shot into the lead, followed by Villaresi and his teammate Alberto Ascari and the rest of the pack. Ferrari raced in the Netherlands for the first time, and the cars impressed mightily, outclassing the Maseratis of Farina, Bira and the Graffenried, as well as the Talbo Lago of Etan Solan. The fight between the Ferraris ended five laps from the end when Ascari's car lost a wheel, which handed victory to Villaresi, who raced on alone to take the flag first. Within a year after opening its gates, Zandvoort had now established itself as one of Europe's premier permanent circuits. <laughs> 